Hey everyone, Michelle Granberg here. Welcome to another episode of Positive Energy, bringing enlightening television for your evolving soul. On this show, we'll explore the importance of inner peace. Inner peace is the experience of internal calm and stability in mind, emotions, and spirit. The human journey feels like an elusive, never-ending quest to discover and sustain inner peace. Good thing my guest, Siri Om Singh is here to share his thoughts on the many paths to lasting inner peace. Please stay where you are because positive energy starts right now. So I'm so excited to be here with Siri Om Singh. Welcome to Positive Energy. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. <laughs> so you are going to help me talk to our audience about ways to find paths to finding inner peace because you're a Kundalini yoga teacher, devotional musician, and a visual artist amongst many other things that you do. And I know that it's your life work to assist people with that self-discovery process, self-love process, and finding inner peace. Do you think that people are more stressed out than ever before? And if so, why? I do see that. I see that uh, mostly through driving behavior. Yeah. And I think that's because people are still looking and searching for that happiness outside themselves. That, I think that's exactly right. They're looking in the wrong place. What causes, what causes us to look in the wrong places? It's just a, a misconception or how we're trained or how we're conditioned to always look outside ourselves for, for peace and happiness. It's misdirected. Yeah. It's the misdirection that we, we we all hear through the radio, the television, the internet. It's Facebook, reinforced through everything we see and hear. Everything, you know, instant gratification. Yeah. We need it, that happiness and that self gratification now. You got to buy it. You got to get it. You got to run after it. You got to work for it. Right. And the thing that people forget or they not they don't know yeah. is that. Uh, happiness is cultivated. Yeah. You can't buy it. You can't stream it. You can't search on it on you know, the internet. You have to cultivate it from the inside out. It's an inside job. Inside job. It's an inside job. I mean, I believe it's there already. We need to strip away what's blocking us from it in some ways. So we can make that related to our spiritual path, ourself as spiritual beings in general. So how do you, you know, connect that path of self-discovery to inner peace and going within? I teach the old method of sitting down and breathing. Mm. Sit and breathe, close your eyes, take a deep breath, go on a exploratory journey on the inside and yeah. find out who you are. Yeah. And people will be so surprised to for, of that discovery yeah. when they discover that the person they're looking at in the mirror really isn't them. Yeah. It's just an outward reflection and what we're told who we are by the world. But on the inside is where the discovery happens yeah. and things pop. When you're sitting there and you're breathing and you're closing your eyes and you get better at sitting from 10 minutes to two hours over a period of practice, it's just extraordinary. Yeah. As one of the great sages says, the breath is enough. Ah. Yeah, I think we overcomplicate things certainly and, and I love the idea of the simplicity of sitting with yourself. Of course, maybe the challenging part is the non-judgmental part of it. So I know you teach meditation, as you mm -hmm. say, it's your heart. Yes. It's your heart. It's, it's, it's the, it it it's all circles heart. back to meditation because meditation is sitting with self in that intimate non-judgmental moment. So how do you teach meditation? How do you help the beginners? Beginners, I just help them to uh, learn how to, one, breathe. You breathe in, you breathe out. Simple. Simple technology. Yes. <laughs> and it is technology. We're wired with that we, technology. We are wired for it. <laughs> because inside, you know, when we're born, we're born with packing instructions. <laughs> and we forget, as we get a little older and our eel gets a little bigger, we forget to go back to those packing instructions and read them. <laughs> and how we read them is through the breathing and sitting. Yeah. 
and we got all the information for all the questions that we have about life inside of us. Yeah. It's really true, it's, it's all within. So breathing is absolutely key. That, I think if you were to give one main tip to, for people to learn to breathe properly, deeply, and to learn to focus on the breath. Focusing on the breath, sitting. You see, the mind is, yeah. is like a monkey inside a cage. And that monkey wants to make noise and wants to have, wants to have activity and is shaking on the noise, shaking on that cage because we want to watch television, we want to watch our telephones, we want to talk on the telephone, we want to chat, we want to gossip, we want to eat, drink, whatever we want to do, we want to hear yeah. the noise and chatter yeah. to, to feel alive. Yeah, right. So we're identifying ourselves with, with all the stimuli that's around right. us and bouncing from stimuli to stimuli. We haven't, we've, we need to relearn how to sit, how to be quiet and how to focus. So I know right. you teach Kundalini Yoga and that's been such a meaningful part of your path as well. So what's your approach to teaching yoga and why is yoga a path to deepening inner peace? Um, just want to preface, I haven't been teaching for a while. Okay. But, um, when I did teach Kundalini Yoga on a regular basis, what I teach is just relax. Just relax. Don't try to be perfect. You know, we live in yes. a perfect world and we see uh, perfect postures on magazines. We see all the advertisement of these beautiful young people, these beautiful bodies doing these extraordinary postures. Don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> Just relax, learn the posture, because with practice, you get better. Just with anything else, you get better. Mm. And the posture, what most people don't realize is the yoga posture, whether it's Kundalini Yoga or Stanga Yoga or Hatha Yoga, the posture is a physical prayer. Mm. That's what it's I for. love that. It's a physical, it's the most yeah, an act pure of prayer, form prayer of, and action. It's the most a body prayer. Pure I love form that. Of prayer, yeah, to ready the body for sitting still and meditating. Yep. Okay. It's in preparation for stillness. And unfortunately, it's been translated into beautification exercise, beautification yep. of the body. Not to say that those benefits don't exist. Those are benefits from practicing yoga for a regular basis. If people have breathing issues, if they have problems with regulating their metabolism, if they have problems with uh, attention, focusing. This is all the benefits you get from any form of yoga. Mm -hmm. Not only kundalini, but any form of yoga. Because what does the word mean, yoga? Union, yoke. Yoke, union, yoke. And what, what, and what are we yoking? We're yoking the mind. The we're mind. Yoking, we're yoking the body. And we're yoking the spirit. Mm. We're bringing the best out of the human experience. I love that. You and also talk about the body as a musical instrument. The, so say a little more about that. The body is a musical instrument only because it's a vessel. Mm. It's a vessel, a pure vessel, yeah. in which sound and air goes through. Mm. Okay? So the, the sound comes from the air, correct? Yeah. Yes. Without the sound, without the air, there's no sound. Mm. So we drum on the body, we sing through the body, we make percussion through the body, yeah. we even make the silence is also part of music. Mm. The space, that's that little pause, that silent pause, that's what actually gives it the extra ingredients. Oh, I love that. That silent, that little pause between each phrase or note. I love that. It's such a beautiful and healing and sacred way of thinking of these, mm -hmm. these vessels. Right. These vessels that came from source, that are energy, really, right. truly, right. you know, are truest at the cellular level. And so talk a little bit more about sound then, because I know you sing and you, mm -hmm. you, pr you uh, devotional music right. and, and kirtan and chanting and, and bringing that together for people as well as drumming. So how, how does that relate to inner peace and what, what is the... You know, okay. what's the end result of that? Okay, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna get a little scientific on you now. Okay, good. Because to talk about sound, you have to include the brain. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, because we have these structures, these amazing structures inside the brain, in encapsulating in the, the pituitary, the pineal, the um, the structures and the the thalamus and those areas. And when we use sound, and we and we also have that incredible organ called the tongue. So when we say things, when we speak, when we say certain words, that tongue vibrates those structures inside the brain. And that brain becomes stimulated and we have that vibration goes through the brain, the ears connected to it, the ears hear it, and all of a sudden we have this incredible experience, this, yeah. this tearful, mm -hmm experience of, of uh, elation and sacredness. And that's because of the amen. Mm. When we say amen, we, we stimulate the heart, we, we open up the throat, and with that, that last part of the amen, the end begins to, to stimulate the structure of the brain. And those are, that's a sacred, sacred mantra, amen. Well, mm. hallelujah, mm. you know, and it cut, it's in our DNA to really want to feel that, that, that expression, that vibration, that sacred expression, because we are sacred beings. Mm. Hue, light, man, being, mm. okay, human being is beings of light. Yes. So we don't want to destroy that, we want to accentuate that through the sound. Mm. And the sound of the word, the, the satanams, the hallelujah, the amens, mm. the shalom. Oh, All no. those words are sacred, sacred words and they're built into our DNA to, for our body to understand and the brain understands it. I love that. I love that. I love <laughs> you really wrap the spirituality into the science into the quantum level of who we are, and, and it makes sense. And that's why we feel so good when we make sound and when we chant and when we sing. Right. And that's it for everybody. Would you say everybody can have that experience? Everyone it's, can have it's it. It's not just for some. And it doesn't mean that you have to sound like an operatic, trained operatic mm. singer. You don't. Right. As long as we have the ability to utilize that technology, mm -hmm. the sound technology, the mantra te technology, we can all experience that uplifting moment. Yeah, I love that. So that's a path to inner peace, right? That's We've already the path. That's, meditation, that's yoga, it. sound, that's it. using our voice, the instrument that's that we it. are. This is what we need. This right here. That's it. And, and it brings out the courage. It brings out the beauty. Yeah. It brings out the humanity. It brings out the love. Mm -hmm. And it brings out the sacredness of who we are. Mm. as human beings, you, light, m man, mind, being. So many levels of us, mm -hmm. so many levels of us. So, so another path for you and for many others is a cr the creative path. Mm -hmm. Some creative path I know is so healthy, healing and spiritual for all of us. Yours is art. So talk mm -hmm. a little bit about, you call yourself a visual artist. Visual artist. And congratulations, you also have a gallery. Yes. Talk a little bit about your path as an artist, your artwork and your gallery. Well, I'll begin when I was just a little child. You know, I gravitated to it naturally and all I wanted to be was an artist. My first grade teacher asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, I want to be an artist. Huh. And here I am. Here you are. Here I am, <laughs> a visual artist, musical artist. Um, art is is important package of, of part, important package of being human. Mm. We have to be able to express ourselves, express ourselves through some form of creativity. Yes. Self-expression, yes. It completes us. Yes. It, it's a completion of being on the human sphere. Yeah. On being in the sphere. And when we deny ourselves that through uh, saying, I can't do it, or I'm not good enough, it just reinforces <coughs> <coughs> that negativity right. that we've always heard of our lives. How many children have you seen that are just natural artists natural gravitation toward when they're young kids and someone says oh that that that's, doesn't look like a tree and ah, that ends their squashes. creative yeah right there, part there of their sometimes. lives because they get that message that i can't draw a tree yeah 
that criticism yeah. and then they internalize right. that sometimes. Right. So you try to help people with that, reverse that, you know, reminding them that we all have an inner artist of one f in one form of in another. And again, creativity is akin to spirituality because it's it about is. our divine uniqueness and putting mm -hmm. that out there in the world. Yes, it is. Um, uh, I don't teach art per se, but what I do try to teach is to have people view a painting of mine without mm. having any precognitions about what the painting is. Mm. Just look at it, just be open, enjoy it. I put the little windows in my, in my work and that window is for the viewer. It's a window of opportunity. Ah, I love it. Okay. <laughs> Symbolic, it's literal. It's a little collage I cut out, <laughs> it's a little square, and I put it in everything. You know, and my, my artwork is just in another extension of my spiritual life. Because yeah. everything that I paint is about life, yoga, meaning, harmony, how we can be more connected to our land, our mm -hmm. earth, ourselves, the beloved, our families, you know, and, and that's, that's my mission in life is mm -hmm. to continue to, to bring happiness and beauty and sacredness Absolutely. into um, the world. And I do it through my, through my gallery. My, my wife, Ayala, is the co-owner of, of 69 Bridge Street, mm -hmm. um, cross-pollination gallery in Lambertville, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Cross pollination in Lambertville, New Jersey. So folks can visit you there. That's they can right. check you out on the web and That's they can right. see your artwork That's and right. the beauty that you are yeah. bringing forth into the world because you have yeah. a beautiful heart mm -hmm. and beautiful talent. And, yes. and, and it reminds us and inspires us of, us of what's in us and how important it is to find some path to inner peace for all of us as well. So I know you're gonna, you're going to share some music yes. with us, so I'm so grateful for that. Do you have a couple of final words before we end? Breathe. Breathe in, yeah. breathe out. Because that is the door that you'll be able to walk through and discover who you really are. Not what you see in the mirror, it's what you discover on the inside. Yeah. It's not who you think you are, it's who you really are. So breathe. Breathe in. Breathe. <laughs> breathe out. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Sirium. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Sirium Singh. This song I'm singing today is a tribute to all those people during the Civil Rights era. African Americans, Mexican Americans, women, all people who wanted to have a voice in our life, our world, our country. I won't go easy. I stand in the light of my 
Martin Luther Jr. King I stand in the light of Mahatma Gandhi I stand in the light of Jesus Christ I won't go easy I won't go easy I know the truth Everyone deserves a right To human dignity And we must show our might Against the inequities Of injustice of injustice I won't go easy I won't go easy Knock me upside my head Throw me in jail Push me to the rail I won't I won't go easy I fight to the end For the right to be human And take our life To the peace of love To the peace of love I won't go easy I won't go easy I won't go easy This next song is called Love is a Precious Thing
don't put your faith in those material things. You'll never find yourself. Wrapping up another enlightening show. One final thought. Inner peace is not something to be gained from external pursuits or material possessions. Inner peace is a choice to circle your attention inward and rest in the calmness found deep within your soul. Thank you Monday Morning Flowers for the beautiful floral arrangement. Thank you for watching. Check out michellegranberg.com, go vegan, feel the burn, and join me next time on Positive Energy.